It's not like I went to high school. I went to high school to a place where it smells what I think. <laughs> this is magnificent. We're all here today for the same reason, because we love America. I traveled far to tell you how much I love America. I traveled 1,700 miles to be with you tonight. And I I have kids, I have grandchildren, and I have a great-grandchild. And I'm concerned for the future of America. About eight months ago, I reached out to Nikki Haley, a woman who I had never met personally, but whom I had the pleasure of seeing when she was the ambassador to the United Nations. And I saw how poised, graceful, knowledgeable, center, intelligent, she was. I saw how she commanded her space, and when she indicated her desire to run for president of the United States, and I saw the field, I said, I want to get to know this lady. I spent 70 some odd years being pretty apolitical, but I, like many of you, wonder about the future of America. I think that it is not in as good a place as it was when I was growing up. And for that, I am sad. And I assume that that brings a lot of you here today, too. We're at a crossroads. And for, and for me, finding the person that we can be proud of, not only domestically, but on the national stage in 2024, is probably the most important decision that all of us are going to have to make. In our current history, Nikki Haley has to be that candidate. Those are the endorsements that matter. 
The ones where they're going to tell you the truth, even if you don't want to hear it. And they're going to tell you why. And it's a combination of brains and heart. And so, Judge, thank you, thank you, thank you. I am forever grateful. We all know 75-year-olds that can run circles around us. And then we know Joe Biden. <laughs> has become the most privileged nursing home in the country. These are people making decisions on our national security. These are people making decisions on the future of our economy. I don't care if you do mental competency tests for everybody. But the point is we need to know that we've got people at the top of their game. And then Congress is not real happy because I said, you know, they have only, they've got one job, and that's to give us a budget on time. Do you know they've only given us a budget on time four times in 40 years? And they don't like the fact that I say, you don't give us a budget on time, you shouldn't get paid. <laughs> that is lawlessness we have never thought was possible in America. Eight million illegal immigrants have come to that door. We've had more fentanyl cross the border last year that would kill every single American. Number one cause of death for adults 18 to 45? Fentanyl. And don't think for a second China doesn't know what they're doing when they send it over. When I was governor of South Carolina, we passed the toughest illegal immigration law in the country. President Obama sued us over it, and we won. We will take what we did in South Carolina and we'll go national. We will do a national e-verify program that requires every business to show that the people they hire are in this country <laughs> legally. And there were two things when I was at the United Nations that Russia, China, and Iran never wanted us to have. They never wanted us to have a strong military, and they never wanted us to be energy independent. We won't just be energy independent, we'll be energy dominant. We will get the We'll get the EPA out of the way. Right now they care more about sagebrush lizards than they do about whether we can afford our utility bill. We will speed up our permitting. We will get the pipelines going, including the Keystone Pipeline. We will, we will export as much liquefied natural gas as we can. We will do nuclear power. We will do an all of the above energy approach. We won't just do enough energy to survive. We'll actually turn our energy sector into an economic powerhouse. No more going hat in hand to Saudi Arabia. No more getting dirty oil from Iran or Venezuela. And I know that y'all care about the environment. But you know what I want to tell you? Everybody in this auditorium cares about the environment. We all want clean air. We all want clean water. We all want a world that we can pass on to our kids and our grandkids. But the way you deal with it is with common sense, not with extremes. You don't go and say, oh, we're gonna have everybody drive an electric car by 2033. You don't, we don't even have the infrastructure for that. And I'm not talking about charging stations. Electric cars are heavy. Our roads and bridges can't hold them. You do it in a way that you transition so that it makes sense. You go after the big polluters like China and India and tell them they've gotta start pulling their own weight. But in order to go forward, we've got to start acknowledging some hard truths. These are my hard truths. I voted for Donald Trump twice. I was proud to serve America in his administration. I agree with a lot of his policies. But rightly or wrongly, chaos follows him. You know I'm right, chaos follows him. And we can't have a country in disarray and a world on fire and go through four more years of chaos. We won't survive it. And so in order to really take that on, you have to understand you don't fix Democrat chaos with Republican chaos. 
We have to move forward with a new generational conservative leader. That's Vicky! A mandate to secure our border with no more excuses. A mandate for law and order in our country. And a mandate for a strong America that we can be proud of. This state is flooding underwater right now. Let me just say this. My husband and our military men and women sacrifice every day for them to be able to have the right to do